Hey, what's up everybody? So, you are thinking about this gun, or maybe you already have it, you wanna know more about it. So, I'm gonna start with the fact that it's basically the 416 right here. The design is the same, the bolt is the same, the bolt uh, catch problem is the same. This piece right here is basically the same, not basically, it is the same. Trigger is the same, it's basically the same gun. Go and watch the video on this gun right here. If you have already watched it, then you already know basically everything about this gun right here. It is the same, except for the size. It shares the same uh, properties, the same gripes, the same problems like the 416. But I'm gonna walk you through all of them or hopefully through all of them if I don't forget something. Okay, so let's start with uh, the build quality. It's the same like the 416 or the KAC. It is wobbling a little bit. You can hear it, how you can prevent this from happening. You can exchange this uh, pin right here, this one. If you have the skills, if you have the tools, you can make your own, which is slightly bigger then it will stop wobbling. I've done this with my 416, it's not wobbling anymore. It's one piece, it's solid, it feels great, but you need the tools, you need the skills, or a friend, like in my case, who has the skills and the tools. It won't affect your accuracy because uh, the barrel and uh, the BB goes from the, low, uh, from the upper receiver and your red, red dot sits on the upper receiver. So that's not an issue, it just doesn't feel that good. Next thing, what I don't really like about this gun is this sling attachment point. This piece right here, you could theoretically attach a sling to this one, but then, or this one for that matter, but then you won't be able to collapse the stock because it goes inside of this right here. And if you attach it here, there is not enough space to attach anything, so that's the reason why I have this piece right here. The stock wobbling a little bit. So if you shoulder the gun, not only that it moves right here, the upper uh, and the lower, but it also moves a little bit here. So it's like, um, it's okay, it's okay. But just be aware of that. It's not 100% solid. If you collapse it a little bit, like to the first position, it doesn't help at all because it's still not engaging in this uh, loop right here. The safety, there is no clicks, nothing. Not clicking, not at all. It is just moving forward and backward. But you can modify it to make it click a little bit more. Like here, that's what I've done on my 416. It's much more tactile. Okay, magazines, that's a little bit different uh, than with the 416. You can obviously use the Stanax. They go in, they go in pretty good, a little bit wobbly. But you can also use the Pmax without any modification because the shaft is actually a little bit uh, less tall. It's a little bit shorter no need to modify anything. If you see, this magazine has been modified to fit the 416. There is a cutout right here. But if I insert it into the gun, the cutout is actually still out of the gun. So that means you can use the PMAC without this modification. It will work just fine. And it's less wobbly. Hop-up adjustment. Hop-up adjustment, just like the 416, it sucks. It really sucks because you have to lock the bolt out, then you need a rod with Allen key attached uh, on the end, like soldered or just pressed in there, I don't know. I had this tool, I lost it, because that's, <laughs> that's the way it is, I'm losing stuff just like everybody else. And you can put it in like right here, you can put it in and turn it, that's one option, or stick it in, turn it, hopefully adjust your hop up and then you can you can shoot and if it's still not enough then you have to do it all over again just imagine doing this in the field that's what i hate about 416 style guns 
or M4 styled guns, they are basically all the same. If you are all about the looks of this gun, by all means go for it. I bought it myself because it looks really dope. It's pretty cool gun. It's really small, that's what I like about it. It feels really solid, except for the wobble. Um, it's, it's just a cool looking gun. But, like I said, in the case of 416, I like this one a little bit better. It's still small, it's looking good, it's, it's wobbly as well, a little bit, but the stock is more solid. This piece is rattling a bit, and the hop-up adjustment. That's what I wanted to show you. You just lock the bolt back, there is a wheel inside, you stick your finger in and you adjust your hop-up. That's it. Way easier to do it in the field, you don't need any tools for that. It's just superior and really the performance, the, the accuracy, everything is basically the same. Uh, one way to solve this problem with the hop-up, that you need a tool, stuff like that, is this piece right here. If you have the skills, if you have the machines, if you know how to measure stuff, you can actually drill through the receiver, through the upper receiver, and put a screw in there to push on the on the hop-up, on the hop-up arm. And then you can just turn it right here and adjust the hop-up from the top, just with your hands, just like this gun. It's not easy to do it and you need to be really precise. I'm not able to do it. This was done by a friend. It's actually his gun. That's an option. Great way to solve the uh, hop-up problem. Trigger box. Just like other guns, just like all the WE guns, your trigger will stop working at some point because of the weak material of the inner parts. Your gun will start doing this. Now I fire the shot, the gun cycles, and when I release the trigger slowly, it will actually fire again. Now it fired. Releasing the trigger, and it fired. If I do it quickly enough, it will catch. It won't fire, but it's only gonna get worse over time. Now it didn't fire. Now I can fire. I just barely touched it and it fired. That's because the material of the hammer and the trigger is too weak. I'm gonna make a video how to, how to repair this just with a file. It's gonna be linked in the description. But the solution is just temporary because it starts wearing again and you will at some point have to replace the hammer and the trigger. These two pieces are rather cheap. I think five euros each, something like that. And you just replace them the gun is working again. Upgrades. Just like all the other WE guns, the only need you uh, the only thing you really need to replace is the hopper bucking. And if you have the money, if you want to invest more to make you feel better, then replace the barrel. That's it. The last thing is the end pass adjustment, FPS adjuster, but you can do this at home. I have a video showing you how to disassemble the nozzle, taking the piece that's in here, putting set screw there, and then you can regulate the FPS of your gun. It's for free, it's working great, actually better than the Ratek n -Pass. We have it in all of the guns, we have like 15 guns in the team, WE guns, and we have it in each one of them, and it's been working great. Don't put Ratek bolts in there, they are too heavy and the gun will start wearing a lot faster, in my opinion. And also what I've seen happen in the field, because the bolt is heavy, because the recoil is stronger, this piece right here can just break off. The whole stock will just fall off the gun and then the gun is done. This usually happens when you put like stronger springs or weaker springs, heavier bolts, stuff like that. Actually the, the lighter the bolt, the better it is. It will handle lower temperatures. For example, this gun, the bolt is really lighter, it's smaller, and my friend played with this gun, or with his gun, this is my gun, his gun is over there on the shelf. Uh, he played with his gun and he was still able to play with propylene, and I was playing with my 416, which is this gun, and I wasn't able to play. It was just not able to handle the cold, the bolt was too heavy, the gas was too weak to make the bolt move backwards fast enough. I had to go for my sniper rifle, because at that time I didn't have the KAC. That's the reason why I bought it. It, it works in lower temperature. Bolt catch, bolt catch. An interesting story. Uh, 416s or M4s and these things right here. The bolt catch 
uh, it's not working great, it's a poor design, and if it's worn down a little bit more, then it just stops catching the bolt. This gun, I believe, is still fine. Oh, you see? Magazine is empty. The, the thing here is pushing the bolt catch upwards. Oh, now it, now it worked. Okay, now it works. And now it doesn't work anymore. The bolt catch is not reliable. I've read on the forums that people were trying to exchange it for uh, Ratek parts, Ratek bolt catches. Um, it might work for a while, but again, it will stop working at some point. There are a lot of people complaining about it. Uh, you probably cannot solve it. Most likely. It's a well-known issue with the 416s and M4s from what I've heard. Handguard, uh, you cannot probably do much with this handguard because it's proprietary. There are screws, uh, yeah, screws. Use screw glue. Glue everything that you can in the gun, every screw that you won't be like undoing every week, just glue it in because the gun, the recoil, will just, uh, will just undo the screws and they will fall out. You will lose them and it's not necessary. Just buy Loctite. Uh, 222 that's the weaker one that's the I think the weakest one and you can still undo the screws just with your hand it won't uh, glue them permanently great great thing I have glued everything everything in the gun like even here in the bolt this screw right here I have screw glue there because I don't want this to come loose yeah, I think that was the most important things, issues and stuff that you should know about when you are thinking about buying this gun, if you are thinking about buying this gun. Uh, again, go watch the 416 video. It's basically the same thing, except for the magazines, I believe, and the size. Other than that, the gun is really cool. Um, you don't see this too often on the fields. That was the reason why I bought it. Man, it feels good. It, it looks different. The recoil is great, um, the sound it makes is also great, but I still have to be honest with you, I've said it in the other videos too, my preferred gun is the KAC right here. It also has some issues, but especially because of the adjustment and the size and uh, the lightweight bolt, I think it's the superior gun, I like it more, I'm playing with this gun most uh, often because I just like it better. If you really dig the looks of this gun, by all means, just just go for it. It's it's a good gun. There is no big problems that would prevent you from buy, buying this gun. If you don't put Ratek parts in there, it should be you should be fine. I'm sure there are people that will go that will go crazy and tell me that Ratek is great and stuff like that. But you don't need it. You don't need it. I hope you liked the video. I hope you got some value out of it. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, comment. If you have different opinion than I do, just put it in the comment. There will be people reading the comments. So yeah, see you in the next video. If you buy WE gun, I would advise you not to use full auto. Use it on semi because the gas consumption is lower. The accuracy is better. And in case of SCAR, we tried full auto once. We immediately screwed up the bolt. It got bent right here. It was not usable anymore because the, the nozzle stopped moving back and forth. If you are fast with your trigger finger, it's just as fast. Almost. Actually, what my friend has done, I'm gonna do it too. He put a pin right here so that you can only put it on semi and not full auto. It won't go any further. In winter, you can use propylene. It works better in lower temperatures. And what's cool about it, you can use this bottle and you can fill it with propane. Green gas is just a propane mixed with uh, silicone oil and it's too expensive. I don't, I don't need silicone oil in my gun, on my bucking. I don't know about you, but the retailers are basically ripping you off with green gas. This bottle refilled cost me one euro. I'm gonna link a video in the description. These magazines, there is a little piece, a plastic piece inside. If you remove it, it doesn't change the function and you will be able to put five more BBs in the magazine. Uh, also, video in the description. I'm wondering about the AKs.
I should buy an AK. Even though I don't like AKs, um, I should just try it out. That's it. I hope you liked the video and I'm out. And I need a coffee.